Whenever you're working with bevels and booleans, issues are bound to occur. So we'll just start beveling and we'll press Alt X and we'll press D and actually change this to a bisect and we'll choose to keep this side. Actually, let's undo that. We want to actually choose bisect and modifier where it splits it, but it keeps it. So now we're just going to shift A and just bring our cube in. And if you're following along properly, you should know that you know there's an accident waiting to happen, but we're just gonna keep working because it seems to just let us do this. And we're just gonna keep on working and you know there we are, we have an issue, but we're just gonna ignore that, right? We're just gonna keep working because we don't care. We are only focused on the goal. However, you know, I do want to do a cut down the middle and that's weird and that's real weird and that isn't really what I want and this is not working out for me, you guys, and I'm not really liking hops right now and I don't know what to do, you know, and the, for this reason, a tool called modifier scroll exists. I personally feel that modifier scroll while looking cool and does a good job is a bit of a failure because it doesn't actually help users the way that it was intended to. It's intended to allow users to go in and basically modifier scroll through their object, just enabling each modifier one by one, finding what area just went wrong. And we see that where we went wrong is from the beginning when we put a mirror that didn't actually complete this shape. So we could solve this a multitude of ways. The easiest way to solve this would be to just add a new mirror modifier on this and keep the rest of the stack intact. So let's do that. We'll just take this modifier and because we're in 2.9, I'll shift D and we'll collapse this and just drag it to the top. And so now we have our, this is our modifier stack, right? So we'll just turn it back off. Let's reevaluate our modifier stack. Now we'll go to operations and modifier scroll. And first we are looking at a complete mesh and then we're looking at a Boolean, a Boolean, and then a cut down the middle that works out because it's evaluating a manifold mesh, of course. And then we're adding a bevel. So we, now we have a new troubleshooting issue that we have to deal with. So we're just going to scroll up to the mirror where we are doubling our trouble and we click back and let's pretend that our bull shapes aren't here. Let's pretend I pressed one at the top of my keyboard in order to go to my first collection and we needed to actually troubleshoot this particular situation here. Well, this is where you can actually, where we can begin talking about mod scroll toggle. This is basically a bull mod management multi-tool. Uh, similar to a lot of our tools, most of our tools are multi-tools where if you hover over their tooltip, you'll see that they have more than one purpose. Uh, basically, they have their basic purpose and then they have a couple of auxiliary purposes like guns on doom, except you know with a lot of attachments. So the first thing that we have is if you general click this, it's going to go through a bull cutter scroll where we can scroll and find an individual cutter. But we also have modifier scroll where if we shift click it, we can scroll through a modifier scroll just like we did before. So we always try to have these options that are deeper in menus, like somewhat handy whenever you're dealing with stuff, because on the fly, you don't want to go and fish through a menu. You're more than likely that option is somewhere very close to you so that you can just quickly get to it. But I do see now that we can do better at making it apparent where these things are. So we are working on a tip system and some systems to uh, help people you know, get acquainted with hops a lot easier, maybe a tutorial mode or something. But let's go ahead and just left mouse click this to go through bull and scroll. That's not the bull we want. We roll again. This is the bull and we want. We click. Now that we have this bull we can just press G and move this over to mitigate this. Alternatively, we can just select the main shape and just lower the bevel until it actually is able to take that shape. But usually I'm more for moving the shape and actually keeping the bevel, or we could even move the shape over until it's just overshooting the mesh a bit, which will help this with itself. So now we actually have a better result, but modifier scroll is there for you to just, and we'll shift click at this time. It's just there for you to help you troubleshoot your mesh and figure out what's going on. But in addition, it's also nice to roll back over your progress to see what's been done. Over on the side of the help, we see that there's plenty of hotkeys for this where you can do things like say shift click to apply a duplicate. I'll show you that real quick. We will shift click to get a duplicate mesh. So keep in mind that the mod scroll has been finished, but now we have this new mesh, which in my opinion could use a cleaning. So we'll just go under operations 
and just choose clean mesh. And then we can actually choose this face and inset it, press I. And this is a duplicate mesh that we're working on. So now we can actually press Q under modifier, add a solidify. And with solidify, I always press two to make the offset zero. And then we could just select both of these shapes. And instead of putting it on the, on the same bevel level as previous, we can control click it to put it on its own bevel level, which will just give us a more quarantine result. However, we see that this bevel is overshot. So if we wanted to fix that, we could actually just go into bevel, but instead of adjusting the last bevel, we want to control roll our mouse up one to adjust the bevel one level under because its bite is just too big and it's cutting into our new geometry. But just like that, we can use modifier scroll to actually scroll to a version of the mesh and then extract a derived version in order to play off of it for future shenanigans. So there are a lot of uses to modifier scroll than just a cursory troubleshooting behavior. It has been expanded just a little bit. But just to show it again, we'll just shift click on mod scroll to go into, well, we'll shift click on mod scroll toggle to go into modifier scroll. And then we'll just get the level we want. We want this level, right? We could either control click, which will apply every mod to this level and keep every mod that hasn't been shown yet. Or we can shift click to basically delete every mod that hasn't been shown and apply every mod to this level on a duplicate. And so when it comes to utility, we attempt to have it in spades. We try to have the best tool for the job at hands at all times. However, right now, I do look at things a little bit like Lego pieces. They're, right now, they're a little bit everywhere, but as they come together, the full picture will become apparent. However, I don't want to alienate users by shaking the boat too much. So we'll shift A, add another cube here. You know, Basically, every time I'm adding a shape, I'm just shift A, adding a cube, and we'll select both of these and just control click difference to give this its own level. And just like that, we can give it its own level. But if we wanted to give it its own level, alternatively, we can just control shift click bevel to do the same thing. And then just press X and just drop that level. And then when we bring in a cube again to perform a difference, this time not control clicking it, just regular clicking it we see that we have this area kind of quarantined off on its own bevel level that we can still adjust, but we still are also on the same level dealing with things with this thing. So there might've been some sort of mishap with the way that we added this last bevel. Let's just double check that. And it looks like our stack might be slightly out of order. Now let's see. Let's see, we wanna put the Boolean actually before the bevel. but we want to put this bull in before the last bevel, giving it its own level. So let's control roll to find the right one. This is the one that we're looking for, all lonely and isolated. And just like that, we're able to create this mesh just very quickly by stacking everything up. But in the event that you run into issues, you can always just press Q, either shift click, mod scroll toggle to go through your modifier scroll or you can go to operations where it's handy or even under add modifiers where it doesn't appear to be placed yet but it would be a good place to have modifier scroll is under modifier so maybe control clicking this in the future may do it but that's a story for another day in the meantime just know that you can always go under operations and just scroll through your modifiers and you can even press l to just have a endless scroll where you just scroll through it over and over, which is something I like to do for a GIF. For example, let's say that I was trying to be a fancy show off, right? I would uh, shift C, place my cursor, get a good vantage point on my cube. I don't have anything selected. So that means that when I press Q, I have an option to add a camera. Now I can roll my cube around, but there, it's rolling too fast. So, you know, we'll, we'll give it a uh, 6,000 frames. So now if we actually you know, shift click this, we can just scroll through our mods, basically while our mesh is just kind of interactively, you know, moving, which is just a nice way to show some of the power of 2.8 in the future now, just 
you know, using mods on the fly and showing everything just so fast. You know, we always complain about how we want additional performance and additional speed, but the condition of Blender at this point in time is something that I wouldn't have believed at the moment that I first installed it. But with that, hopefully you have a better idea about modifier scroll in action.